Welcome, this is my 18 week bump date. I'm so excited. Um, I am two weeks away from going to our anatomy scan to finding out the gender of this little baby. And things are just getting really real. Um, this week the baby is the size of a sweet potato. It says five and a half inches and this app says five ounces. Another app says seven ounces and another app I have says like six and a half ounces. So somewhere between five and seven ounces I'm guessing. Um, it says this week that the baby now has fingerprints on her fingers and toes. Um, it says that she's getting more, he or she is getting more pronounced with their movements. So they can now do things like grab their umbilical cord, which sounds like fun. Um, <laughs> and hiccuping, which I think I've been feeling. Like I think I'm going, I'm not going crazy. I feel like I'm feeling hiccups. And I feel like I'm feeling them a lot. And with Riley, she, she hiccuped a lot. She had a lot of hiccups to the point where it was like almost annoying. I feel bad saying that, but they were kind of annoying towards the end because like it would just be like a constant twitch in my belly. Anyway, um, this week I don't have too many symptoms going on this week. Um, I have started getting some dry skin, which is rather annoying. Um, like just dry spots and it's not usual for my skin. My skin's pretty normal. It's not dry. It's not oily. I just have pretty normal skin. Um, so that's not fun. And when I do my makeup, like if you get really close to the mirror, I can see the dry spots where my makeup is like clinging to it. And it's just, it's not cute. It's not a cute look at all. Um, another one is that I got, I think I jinxed myself with this one because last week when I was reading off the symptoms thing, it was all like, one of them was constipation. I was like, no, uh, constipation, no. Um, and this week I <laughs> have noticed constipation, not like severe constipation, just like constipation for me, which I feel weird talking about anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I've started to get uh, less frequent and less easy bowel movements. That's so weird to talk about. Anyway, um, but aside from that, I don't really have any other uh, symptoms, no real cravings, nothing really too, um, nothing too big. I, I don't know, we made pizza the other day and that was really good. Um, nothing that I've been like, I have to have. I'm still, I'm still obsessed with my chai teas. I guess that's a craving. I have to have my chai tea latte every morning. Um, but aside from that, I don't, there's nothing that I'm like, I have to have it. Oh, my egg scramble. I love my egg scramble. But again, that's not like a, I, I have to have it sort of thing, but that's like a, I have a toddler over here being crazy. Okay, apparently we've got the whole family in here. Um, so, <laughs> um, anyway, this week, this past week or so, we've been thinking a lot about where this baby will, um, not necessarily where he'll or she will be sleeping. I'm pretty sure he or she will be sleeping in our room um, just because breastfeeding, um, hopefully that works out. Jacob, don't turn off that light. Sorry, uh, they just left and turned off the light on me. Um, what was I saying? Um, not, not as far as like where he or she will be sleeping because I know for a fact that he or she will be sleeping with um, in our room because um, I plan to do breastfeeding again, hopefully if it works out. With Riley, it was really tough. Breastfeeding took a lot out of me and it took a good solid month to actually get it down to a science for us. Um, and if it, it was just with her being jaundice and it was just, it was, it was a big deal. Um, if it takes that much energy out of me again this time around, I don't think I'll be able to do it. And that, that really makes me sad to say, um, but I just don't think I'll have the energy because I was doing um, every two hours on the dot and because she had troubles latching, we, we, would, we would nurse for anywhere from 45 minutes to up to an hour and a half. And then right after that, I put her down and if it took an hour and a half, that means 30 minutes later, I was back nursing again. And that's what we had to do to beat the jaundice. And that's what we had to do. Eventually, we did three days of that. And eventually after that, we finally got the latch and she got over her jaundice and she got her birth weight back and everything was like, you know, birds and rainbows. But to get to that point was just so hard and it took so much energy out of me that if I have to do that again with a toddler and being a stay-at-home mom this time, I just don't think I'll be able to do it. So I'm hoping that breastfeeding works out, but um, if not, I'm not really sure what we'll do. Um, there's always formula. I think I would try to pump with Riley. I never responded to a pump very well, so I'm not sure if that'll change this time around or not. 
I'm hoping if breastfeeding doesn't work out, then pumping will. But if pumping doesn't work out, then we'll just have to go to formula. Um, but either way, I would like to try to start, I would like to at least, you know, give a good go at nursing. So I know he or she will be sleeping in our room. But what we've been thinking about is whether or not we want to buy this new baby a crib or if we want to go ahead and make this a special moment for Riley and buy her a big girl bed. Um, when we bought Riley's bed, we bought it with the intention of that's going to be her bed for a long time. It's a convertible crib, so it went from a crib to a toddler bed to a day bed, and then it eventually can go out to being a full-size bed. Um, right now we have it at a, at a, at a day bed, um, but we were wondering, do we buy another crib, another convertible crib like this one? for a new baby or do we make this a special moment for Riley and buy her a big girl bed and then she can be the one to pass down her crib down to her little baby brother or baby sister. Um, and I think that's what we're leaning towards but then we also have the question of okay do we want to buy her a toddler size bed or do we want to go ahead and go to a full size bed. Um, we have a queen which I feel like is ginormous and I feel like a fool is pretty close to a queen. It's pretty similar in, in size um, so I just I, I don't know I think it would look weird having a full-size bed in her little bedroom and um, just that's like a lot of space and that's a lot of bed for a two and a half year old I mean she's only so big um, but that's what we're, we're trying to decide right now is whether or not we want to get her I think we're pretty set on we want to get her the bed but it's whether or not we want to get her a toddler size bed or go all the way up to a full size bed. The thing about a toddler bed though is that if we get her a toddler bed here in another, I don't know, five years, we're gonna have to get an even bigger bed and it's just like, do we wanna do that or should we just skip the, you know, should we save the money and just skip and automatically go straight to the full bed? Um, so that's a decision we have to make. And then also, um, another piece of furniture is her dresser. She, right now, Riley has this ginormous um, Ikea Hemmies, I think is what it's called, dresser. And it's absolutely ginormous. Um, what we would decide, we're trying to decide whether we want to remove that dresser into our room or and get her a smaller dresser and then have us, as in me and Jake and new baby, split the giant dresser since uh, most of our clothes are hung up. Um, um, so I think we might split it in half that way as opposed to buying a whole nother dresser because dressers are expensive. And you start adding this stuff up and it's like, okay, a new, a new mattress a new frame, a new dresser, I mean right there we're looking at like what, I mean a, a mattress is like 300, a frame is like another 300, a dresser is like another 300. We're looking at like three, six, nine hundred dollars right there just to, just in furniture which like I know it's expected with a new baby and we, we're ready for it and everything but I don't know, I think the less we can spend right now the better so we might just split the dresser but then I have to figure out how to organize it and that's just like a whole nother ordeal. Um, but yeah, aside from that. I don't really think there's much to update on. We, I think I said in my last appointment, we had scheduled our appointment for our um, anatomy scan and that's just getting closer and closer. We're counting down the days for that. We're so excited. Um, we're trying to get Riley more um, excited about it too. I think she already is. She loves to come in in the mornings and it's really funny. In the mornings now, when I wake up, if I have a full bladder, I said this last time where like I said like, oh, if I have a full bladder, I have a bump. This time around, if I have a full bladder, it's a full on bump. And it's really funny, depending on which side I wake up on, I normally fall asleep on my stomach and then I wake up kind of on my side. I have a massive bump on whichever side it is. It's really funny. I got a picture of it the other day. I'll insert it. Um, it's just, it's hysterical. <laughs> um, you can totally see it. I took one and I posted it on Instagram the other day and I was like, hi there, baby. Um, it's, it's absolutely hysterical. That's another thing. Um, the, all the apps I have say that you should be able to feel your uterus about an inch and a half below your belly button. I can feel it right at my belly button. They say that at 20 weeks, you should be able to feel it right at your belly button, but I feel it right at my belly button. And then in the mornings, with my bladder being really full, it's a little bit above my belly button. It's about about an inch, half an inch, half an inch to an inch above my belly button. So I'm not sure if that's because I, it's my second kid or not. I, I'm not really sure why um, my uterus is just stretching faster, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. So yeah, I think aside from that, there's nothing else to report. Um, I'm sure my next month date will be much longer because 
I'll have my anatomy scan to talk about and the gender to talk about and um, maybe even some um, pictures to show. I'm not sure, I don't think they allow you to record, but I think they normally give you like a sheet of pictures from your anatomy scan, right? I think so, hopefully. So I'll have ultrasound pictures, I'll have the gender to talk about, I'll have um, the just general anatomy scan to talk about if anything, God forbid anything goes wrong. Um, and yeah, so sorry this bump date was kind of short, um, but next one will be really fun. We're about to go film the um, gender prediction test um, video um, here in a little bit, and that should be up on my channel pretty soon. So I'll have it in the i card thingy or down below, or it'll probably be at the end of this video too on the end card thing. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, hope everyone's doing well. I know somebody commented on my last video saying that they were like literally like, I think like two days ahead of me or a day ahead of me, something crazy. Like she was right on par with me. So I hope anybody else who's following along with me um, is doing well. And yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye.